Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be making this moss pole. It's a larger scale moss pole. Uh, I used the, uh, the fencing rather than the, uh, the gutter guard. Uh, that is to make a bigger diameter pole. Uh, as you can see we've got a one and a quarter inch uh, PVC pipe in there with the, uh, the wicking cord. So this is a self watering pole and we're going to plant this little Hoya Imbricata on there. Hopefully that's coming into focus. Uh, it's going to have this beautiful pole to climb up and hopefully the leaves are going to fold flat out onto this. That's why I went with the larger diameter pole. Uh, actually, let me uh, show you the difference in pole size between the, this one with the, uh, the bigger pole and, and uh, uh, using the fencing versus the one with the gutter guard. So this is the one with the gutter guard. There's not too much of a difference but you can definitely see that there's, there's a size difference. And also, the, the, the one with the gutter guard with the smaller diameter pole uh, is great for the small plants, but uh, if you've got a heavier plant that's, uh, that's got more weight to it and uh, maybe more tippy and stuff, that you want a little bit more support, the, the thicker gauge poles are, uh, are going to give you that support. Since I didn't post it at the end of the video, I will show you how to water this just in case you were unsure. So here we go, we just want to fill this uh, tube up. Just be careful it doesn't overfill. You can hear it. it. Sounds like it's getting close to the top. There we go, it's right at the top. Now that since this is a bigger diameter uh, pole, you probably won't need to water it as often. Uh, just because it has more uh, water holding capacity. So uh, so yeah, enjoy your self-watering moss pole. Just make sure when you walk by it to see if it's nicely, uh, nicely damp, not wet. And if it's a little on the dry side, top it up. Okay, so for this project, uh, pardon me if I bend down and, and you see a little bit more of me than, than the project. I'm trying to uh, stand up over a table and the camera, I couldn't get good angles. So um, what you're going to need for this project is a this particular one I'm using a larger scale uh, PVC pipe this one is a one and a quarter inch diameter uh, they come in various sizes so this is a good one for the self watering pole a uh, moss pole that you uh, feel uh, dries out too quickly uh, and you want more water to be accessible uh, for a longer period of time so this one here obviously will store more water. There's a lot more space in here. I've uh, put a cap on the bottom, as you can see, and I've siliconed the cap to the base, to the pole. Uh, that way it won't uh, allow water to leak out, and I'm safe from water damage. So I'm going to, also for this project, I've got my, my moistened sphagnum moss. I hope that I have enough here. Uh, it's all pre-moistened. I need to wring it out, but uh, it's uh, it's looking pretty good. It smells lovely. I've got wicking cord here. This is uh, an actual. I bought it as wicking cord. It is uh, nylon and cotton uh, mix. Uh, so um, I guess the outer edge is is nylon and the inside is cotton. I assume. Uh, but I've been using this for for many years, um, four or five years now, and uh, maybe four years and uh, it hasn't broken down. I can still utilize the, um, the ones that I've used in my other self-watering pots. They're, they're still in great shape. Uh, so if you change your plants, you can always wash them off and, and uh, clean them up and, and reuse them. Uh, uh, so they, they do have staying power. Uh, I bought this off of Amazon. I can put the link in Amazon uh, down below uh, for the Canadian Amazon uh, site. I'll try for the, uh, the US site as well. Um, so look down in the comment section below, or in the, the description below, to, uh, to see if you can find some of the items that I've used. And then I've got the, uh, the Velcro, the floral Velcro uh, tape, which is fantastic. I love this stuff. Can't get enough of it. I've got my pot, which we're going to use in a second. Uh, I've got varying sizes of zip ties. I still haven't gone out to get a slightly smaller size zip tie, but I've got the large size. And I've got the small size. You'll, if you're not familiar with what a zip tie looks like, I should have gotten the small, one, uh, the big one out. They're just a small little clip that uh, zips tight to hold things together. You've you've dealt with them in the past, I'm sure. 
uh, buying a pair of scissors or whatever. They're always the hardest thing to get off, and you need a pair of scissors to get the zip tie off to, to, to use your scissors. <laughs> so, and then this fencing here, it's a plastic fencing. This one is, can I get it in camera here? This one is a rigid utility mesh. Uh, the one I was looking for had a, a little bit of a, a wire inside, uh, co coated in plastic. That would give you a little bit more of a moldability. Uh, this one is just solid plastic. This is the only type I could find um, in my uh, hardware store at this time. I could go with the solid metal um, uh, mesh with the same uh, one centimeter by one centimeter uh, diameter uh, size uh, holes. Uh, but uh, the only thing is about the, the solid metal ones, I know that they're probably a galvanized steel or something like that, but I, I fear that over time they will rust. Uh, the water will, it's going to be damp a lot of the time, so I fear that it would rust and, and break down. Uh, the plastic will not. Or it shouldn't. <laughs> uh, the only time plastic will break down is if it's exposed to way too much light. Uh, and that happens over time, it gets brittle. But, uh, yeah, so I think that's all the materials we need, and, oh, and a pair of scissors. Don't forget scissors. Uh, so, the reason why I went with the fencing for this one is because this pole has a wider diameter than the gutter guard uh, can fit. So, with the gutter guard, if I put it around here, it just goes around the pole. Just. So, there's not going to be enough space to put any moss in. So, with this... Because of that, I'm going with the fencing, and I also wanted the wider pole so that the uh, the plant that I'm I'm utilizing, which is the Hoya, uh, is it Imbricata? I think that's what it is, and uh, I want the leaves to kind of fold a little bit flat along the the uh, surface of the moss pole. So I didn't want to go with a really small diameter. I wanted to go with a a slightly bigger one so that it can uh, showcase the leaves a little bit better. So now we want to kind of figure out how much of this fencing we want. So we're just going to curl it around the, uh, the pole and see how much space. You can make it as big or as, as small as you want. So I'm just going to wrap it around. I think if I cut it here, this gives me more than enough uh, moss uh, coverage. So I'm just going to cut... Cut along the line, hopefully that's coming into focus. Okay, so another thing that I want to do, I'll bring it a little bit closer, is notice how uh, here, let me get into the camera here, uh, there's a little bit of overhang here of, um, of the plastic. I just want to remove that. It, you don't need to, but it just adds to the cleanliness of the, the project. It also makes the house more messy because these things go flying as you're cutting them off. Okay, so it's all nice and... Am I in focus? There we go. Now I'm all the edges are all nice. We're ready to kind of start. So I'm going to move this fencing off. So first what we're going to do is we're going to measure... I'm going to utilize this pot. I'm going to measure how far down my, my pole sits in the pot. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to mark that location and I'm going to put it on the, the mesh and we're going to just start the pole where we need to start. You can have it go lower but then it's going to be sitting in the soil and that will be okay. Uh, it might turn your pot into a self-watering pot. It will wick down the, down the moss and then it will wick into your media, whatever you're using. Uh, so I'm just going to cut off the extra. Don't need this up here at the top. So now we have the perfect piece to work with. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to... Oh, before we get to this. So before we get to the moss, uh, we need to get the, uh, the wicking cord ready. Do you remember how we did this if you watched the last video? Um, I'm going to utilize two wicking cords for this because the, cord, uh, the pole is bigger. So I'm going to measure the wicking cord from the, the bottom of the pole all the way to the top. And then we're going to go right back down all the way to the bottom. And then we're going to add, this is a longer pole, so I'm going to add about a foot of cord. Give it a cut. And now I want two, so I'm going to just, instead of measuring it down the pole, 
instead of measuring it down the pole, I'll just measure it against itself. All right. There we go. So we'll give this a cut. You can, if you want, tie these two together. Am I on camera? Tying these two together to make a knot so they don't fray. This is going to go down into the pole. I was going to uh, do them separately, but I thought just now that uh, why not put them together? They're just in the pole. <laughs> They're going to do the same thing. So we're just going to let this fall down the pole until we feel it stop. It's easier if the pole is standing straight up and down. It falls a little bit better. Just moving it off camera just to see if it's hit the bottom. You'll know that it's hit the bottom when it when there's there's no more pull to it. You can kind of feel it hit. Okay. So now I'm just gonna spread these out. I'm gonna put them, is there a good angle for this? Just on opposite sides of the pole. Then I'm gonna get one of the big zip ties. It's really hot down here in the grow room. <laughs> uh, it's humid, I'm sweating. I'm gonna use one of the zip ties and I'm just gonna zip it into place so it doesn't move. Need to rethink these angles, my back is, uh, is killing me. All right, so. You don't need to zip it really, really tight because you want the water to um, to go down underneath the zip tie. You just simply just want to keep the um, the cords in place. Now we're just going to candy stripe the wicking cord around the pole like so. This is turning out easier than I thought it was going to. Now you'll see that you have double the coverage. Looks like I didn't give myself enough wicking cord. It'll be it'll it'll do. I can move them down a little bit. There we go. I've got them touching. <laughs> uh, this will take some work. Okay, there we go. Get them separated. There we go. We got uh, them going almost all the way down the pole, and now I'm going to utilize another one of these big zip ties. I'm trying to figure out which way these zip ties zip. That's uh, sometimes the trick. <laughs> there we go. That will make sure it's tight. Okay, so now we've got the wicking cord in place. So now it's uh, almost self-watering. Now we're just going to cut off the um, the excess here. Cut off the excess. Beautiful. We get rid of all of this extra wicking cord. Okay, so we look good. It's actually quite perfect. Uh, where where we ended off with the wicking cord. I thought that I I didn't have enough, but I just I just had enough. It it comes right to the bottom here. All right. So now we want to add our moss. You want to. Make sure to wring it out as best you can. You want it to be nice, light, and fluffy, but you don't want all kinds of extra moisture in there. Small handfuls are probably best. And then we're going to, I should have used my, uh, my blue tarp. It would have made cleanup easier. Actually, let me go and grab my tarp and uh, so I don't have a lot of extra cleanup. Okay, so we're, better, we're in better shape here. We're nice and clean. So just like the other moss pole that we made, Again, if you haven't watched that video, feel free to watch it. I'll maybe uh, link it in a card above uh, using the smaller PVC, which is good for, for many other plants. This one is better for uh, plants that uh, are heavier, um, with more weight, that, that you don't want the, the pole to collapse. So I'm just doing a nice even coverage of moss. I was hoping I, uh, I got enough moss ready, and it appears I might have gotten enough, maybe a little extra, which is fantastic. It's better to have a little extra than not enough. Ugh. But you can always easily mix some up, unless 
you don't have any more, <laughs> then that's a problem. Alright, I think the most expensive part of this is probably the moss. Moss, uh, moss is quite expensive nowadays. Okay, so I think I've got a nice base of moss. Hopefully I've got enough, not too much. <laughs> uh, and then we're just going to place this pole so that the top is at the top of the, um, the mesh. And then we're going to get our zip, little zip ties out. You're going to need a lot of little zip ties. So just uh, make a mess there and, and uh, get them all prepared so you can easily grab them. Uh, these ones, this is going to be easier to maneuver than the... Um, than the gutter guard, the other moss pole that I did, only because these line up, uh, the, the squares line up very, very easily, and they're, they're, they're not going to break as quickly. So you're going to you have to use a little bit of pressure in the beginning, and then you want to take your, uh, your zip tie and tie the first, the first square. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now you got the start. We're going to try to squeeze this taco together. We want to try to make sure that they're nice and even so that uh, it looks nice and, and uniform all the way up. And maybe every second or third hole you want to add um, a zip tie. That's why it's going to take so many. <laughs> and as you're going, you're just kind of, kind of uh, cradling the moss in here and trying to to encompass the whole the whole pole. I hope that that's coming in for you. It's super easy. Uh, it's just it could be time consuming. It could be therapeutic. So let's just get in here, and I will speed this up, and we'll I'll just zip up the rest of it and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so we're at the last one, <laughs> and this one should be the easiest one, because it shouldn't, it probably isn't completely full. So this is a nice substantial pole, look at that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some extra moss here, might need to make some more, we'll see, wring it out. We just want to shove it into the crevice to make a nice, uh... oh, you're not even looking. <laughs> uh, you want to make sure that it's nice and, and firm in here. If you need to add more, add more. Let me try to find the camera. Oh my gosh. We want to get it in there. These use quite a bit of moss, actually. I was surprised. I didn't think I would use the whole bowl. In a way, I thought I would, and then at the same time, I thought, eh, no, that's a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to just shove this in down at the bottom. It's just going to make it uh, so that it uh, doesn't wiggle around and, and start loosening over time. A little bit more in here at the beginning. Okay, so there we have this beautiful moss pole. You can go if you want and, uh, and take away any of the stuff that's poking too much out of the holes. Uh, you can also take like a... Uh, knitting needle or something and poke it all back in whatever you want to do just to make sure that it's uh, it's not going to fall out over time uh, but you can do that uh, in time you don't have to do it all today a little fun therapeutic uh, task so now I'm just going to cut all of the uh, the excess zip ties and uh, then we'll pot it up look at that beautiful pull oh I got one left. <laughs> There's always one. There we go. It looks really, really nice. This side is going to face the back of the pot, uh, just so that I don't see all of the, um, the little zip tie nubbins. Okay, let's get the pot out. Again, I'm using this pot. It's a nice, uh, 
a heavier clay pot. It's going to go right inside there and you sometimes have to get creative when you're using a, a taller pole to uh, keep your pot standing up so it doesn't tip over. I'm just going to get rid of this, let's start potting. Okay, so we've got everything we need here. We've got the pot, we've got the, uh, the, the Velcro uh, plant ties, uh, we've got the, uh, the beautiful, uh, yeah, it's Hoya Imbricata. Look at those beautiful leaves. It's a shingling type of Hoya, so it wants to grip onto something. It was actually, look at this long growth here. It was actually trying to adhere to the table that it's growing on. It was just growing across the table, uh, but I wanted to grow up a pole. So that's why we made this. Uh, so I want to stick the pole in this pot. This mix is uh, probably 80% coconut husk, and then 20% or maybe maybe 70% uh, coconut husk, 20% uh, perlite, and I have a little bit of potting soil in there. It's a lot of uh, coconut husk. So we want to try to make sure that the uh, the pole is as t as uh, straight as you can get it. That way, it's not leaning. If it leans, it's probably going to be a problem down the road. So I'm going to take this uh, Hoya out of its pot. Hopefully it has rooted in quite well. There are some roots in there. I don't know whether you're able to see. But uh, I've only had it in this pot for a short time. So um, maybe, maybe like two months. Okay. But they want a nice uh, airy mix. It's more of an epiphytic variety. Again, it wants to grow up a tree rather than grow up in a pot. All right. A little bit more soil. Perfect. And now I just want to take this tendril or the the climby climby bit. Let me bring the uh, the camera down a little bit closer. Okay, so this might be a little hard to see, but we've got the, the, the growth coming out right here by my finger. And I'm just going to try to press it against the pole as much as I can. Let me get some uh, of this uh, Velcro. I'm going to need quite a big piece to go all the way around here. And I'm just going to wrap it firmly, but not tightly. Uh, so that it has nice contact with the uh, with the pole. Then I'm just wrapping it around. Are you able to see this? It kind of blends. I'm just wrapping it around the pole. It will eventually probably just grow straight up. I just didn't want it to go to the top of the pole right away. So let me uh, let me get another piece ready. Be gentle with it. You don't want to break it. Once it finds security, that's when it's going to start producing some leaves. If you see a little junction when you're when you're doing this, uh, just be careful. Don't put the tape over top of it, uh, the Velcro tape. It's not going to hurt it, but you don't want to in, uh, disturb any development of of leaves as it finds its its way. So that is the end product here. <laughs> And uh, I hope that it does well. Hopefully we'll have an update in the next uh, uh, year <laughs> to see if uh, new leaves have started and how it's growing along the pole. Uh, so this one's going to get a fairly prominent spot. It's going to get a, a nice well-lit environment. And the pole will have to be watered. Well, we'll see how that goes. Since it has a bigger reservoir, it might need to be watered every uh, other day, every couple of days. The smaller diameter poles need to be watered once a day, maybe even twice a day. To, to stay moist. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that this uh, helped you create your own moss pole and uh, yeah, it's easy, it's relatively inexpensive, it's just expensive to get started but once you have all the supplies you're good to go and you can pop them out uh, pretty quick and uh, relatively inexpensive. I think on average you're looking at just under ten dollars per pole if you have a small one maybe five bucks uh, so it's much better to make your own than it is to go out and purchase them. Anyway, until next time you guys, happy growing!